spiritual topics. Today we are blessed to present one of these insightful lectures entitled The Life of Lord Mahavira Always Concentrate Inside Part 5 of 5 on Between Master and Disciples given in Chinese and English on July 7, 2019 at the Newland Ashram, Taiwan also known as Formosa. So now, just like every other yogi or monk renunciates, the master Mahavira, at that time he wasn't a master yet, okay? He did not know he's a master even, okay? He just went around like a monk. He went to another village called Kalambuka, yeah. Two brothers, Megha and Kalahasti, ruled this village, and the chief of the village, the two brothers. Although they were landlords and chieftains, they were still involved in unlawful activities like looting the neighboring kingdom. Wow. Yeah, bad government. Tying them with ropes. Oh my God. Uh, this uh, bad print in here, I understand now. I have to explain it. They saw the two, uh, Master Mahavir and his companion come, come to their village. They suspect that they were thieves or some bad robbers or something. Of course, you know, uh, yeah. That's what the Chinese call, yung kou yen kan ren ti da, meaning you see with the dog's eyes, they see everybody low. The dog on lower hate, so they look everybody from the lower point. <laughs> That's what I mean. Meaning these people, they are robbers themselves. So when two strangers came to their village, they thought they are robbers, something. So they tied them up. It did not explain all that there, but I guess that's what it is. They just printed here like something missing, you know? They so tying them with ropes. I didn't say tying whom. And who is tying whom? So the two chieftains of the village tied the two masters up. You know, the master Mahavira and his companion. They taught to them inhumanely. Oh, yeah. What surprise! When he still could extract no information at all from them, he ordered, oh, this is a younger brother, tie them both up and beat them up to get information, to get them to confess, to see what they are, who they are, what are they doing here. But they have no, no confession from them, so he sent them to his elder brother, Meg, for further torture and interrogation. How surprising! Humans, again. I'm still surprised as humans sometimes, even among my own so-called disciples. Very surprised, big, huge, massive <laughs> surprise now and then, when I have a chance to get to know people. Because I thought, whatever I said, whatever my so-called teaching, it's all clear, like a crystal class. Uh, I think even children, five, six years old, understand perfectly. I don't make a big fuss of making intellectual, big, glamorous words. I teach in plain English and in plain logic, plain truth, so it's like the hair on my head, huh? It, it doesn't grow anywhere, it grows on my head, right? <laughs> so, or the nose in front of my uh, face. So I am quite surprised, was surprised, am surprised, and possibly will be always ever surprised <laughs> that somebody don't capiche. I thought everybody understood. Even when I went outside to lecture for the public, you know, I thought, oh, of course I understand everything. <laughs> but no, it's not true. Otherwise the whole world would have waken up by now, would have followed me, my teaching by now, 
and we would have no more war, even individual wars, even killing of animals, any problem of any kind. Yeah, but I still don't understand this. I still don't understand that humans don't understand. <laughs> I still think that humans do understand. Well, I do hope, I still have some hope here and there, now and then. Uh, it's helpless sometimes to talk about it, to think about it. Okay, so now, the two of these good monks, you know, Mahavira and his companion, companion friend, were shackled like the animals. They were produced before Meg, the elder brother, who felt as if he was looking at a known face. Ah, he felt like he knew these two people. The elder brother felt like the face of Mahavira and his companion are familiar according to this. So he suddenly recalled that once he has seen Prince Vardaman at the court of King Siddhartha. Wow, lucky, otherwise they will be dead by now. Being tortured and beaten up by the younger brother already so severely, and if beaten up one more time here, tortured one more time, I don't think they can survive, and we will have no more story to continue. Thank God. So he feel like one of these shackles, spy, you know, he thought maybe a spy or thief, seemed to have an, an uncanny resemblance with the prince that he saw, Prince Vardaman, yes. So he came closer and closer and recognized that the person in bondage was none else but really Prince Vardaman, who had become a shraman, monk, right? Yeah. They either call them Shraman or Swami or Yogi. So he fell at the feet of Mahavira and with tears of repentance in his eyes, he begged to be forgiven. I wanted to cry myself. Oh, humans, my God, when we were there, ever wake up. When released, Mahavira resumed his journey. <laughs> he do nothing else, just continue walking, go somewhere else. All right, my God, I told you, in the course of uh, human spiritual history, I have not read any story of sacrifice and endurance and suffering like Lord Mahavira. Perhaps there are, uh, finally, you know, like for Jesus Christ, or Buddha, you know, they tried to kill him, or other master being tortured or poisoned to death, yeah? But uh, in the meanwhile, the story in between, up to the time of, uh, of death of the masters, we, we hardly hear any stories like this. Okay, some suffering, some endurance of hardship, difficulty, maybe hungry, thirsty, being uh, misunderstood and all that, but hardly any story has so much repeated suffering like this. Right? Have you heard any more than I read here? No, huh? Still more to come. Okay, next time, huh? I see you next time. It's time for you to go out, take a rest. You've been sitting all day, and it's time for you to take a break and have some good food, okay? Uh, the SMTV people, I want to see you upstairs somewhere, or wherever you are uh, designated, okay? Just have a few talks. Uh, no scolding, don't worry. <laughs> Just taking care of you, asking if you're okay, if anything you need. Okay, sayonara! Vamos, andiamos, allons-y. <laughs> Was it in uh, Italian? Let's go. Ah, andiamo, yeah, yeah. Oh, let's go in English. <laughs>
我们要走啦 ，in、uh, Chinese， 嗯、啊，啊，住得了，啊 ，See you later， 哈 ，English， last night I， I was in a hurry to come back here for my retreat， 啊 ，I really。Hope one day I have a better retreat than these two times. It's my phone, okay? So it's you. Otherwise, you think it's money, money? No. I need it sometimes. Sometimes the landline don't work out of electricity. Then I have to use it to contact. A lot of work from this. Thank you, ah. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you for looking like you understand. That was very good, huh? Ah, very good. Thank you. Are you okay? Hello. 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 什么意思？昨天下雨，举着脸啊，那是讲是讲真话哈，啊，会会有冷气 ，OK， 谢谢、啊、快来了、嗯，是来了吗？我是还没来，还没哈，还没呀、啊，所以才比较热 ，OK， 好了，会有了 ，OK， 会会凉一点，会凉一点，不客气，嗯，不客气，我是应该照顾你们的。还好吗？我也穿很多衣服啊，觉得热、啊。嗯，不穿人家就是我不穿，<笑>穿都会热。嗯，哦，女孩子好苦啊，男孩子他脱光光出去，没人讲什么。你看 ，Lord Ma Ma Havira， 好方便，是吗？哎，到处都走这样子，没人讲什么，啊？我穿漂亮衣服还被批评呢，嗯、哦，这真的不对劲，<笑>啊，像老马马维拉那个样子，他什么都不穿，没人管，是印度啦 ，OK， 印度他们比较自由自在，啊，比较尊重修行人，漂亮。<笑>今天有没有什么好吃啊？我还没吃呢，早餐带来的还放在那里。有没有什么好吃在这里？迷糊过错一下，我这几天吃不下，是不是天气的关系？啊？不是他们煮的比较，<笑>比较没有胃口。如果没有胃口，不过他们弄，比方说那个尊泉那些哈，然后。呃，包沙拉跟那个叫什么那个那些生菜啊，薄荷那些哈、啊，高端茶还是别的那个哈，呃，上菜啊，觉得还会吃得下，嗯，啊，现在有啊，有哎呦，我不知道现在要上去开会呢，我很快开会，很快下来，也带上去啊，真的、啊，哎呦，你们这么好哦。真的要留人啊<笑> ！Thank you 哈，谢谢。今天是谁煮饭？台中啊！哎呦，真的好好。日有沙，他心痛哈、啊。怎么知道我喜欢那个？又准备好，又带上去呢。哦、oh, ，Thank you 啦啊，一定吃得好啊 ！Thank you。也许我开会晚下来看你们，哎。不是吃东西了，要看一看 ，OK？ 准备一些东西，然后我分给你们，好吗？